All right, welcome today to the monthly free Getting Real group coaching call. So I've been um, thinking about how the Getting Real Truth skills can help us sort out the conflicting information that's coming at us around COVID and around so many things. And it's really important, I think, to make some distinctions and to be able to understand how the mind works. So one of the big distinctions in the getting real work is the difference between what you see or hear out there and what your mind does with this. So I want to I want to start with that and just do a review on how, how and then I want to look at how, how important that is and, and some of the other uh, ways that our minds can distort what's coming at us or can augment it in, in, uh, in ways that are either self-serving or self-protective and um, help us be more self-aware so we can uh, sort out fact from fiction or what's out there from what's in here. So, um, one of the examples I often give if I'm, if I'm teaching is, let's say you're, you're sharing a home with somebody and your, this, your, your housemate, your partner slams the door really hard after you guys have had a, you guys have had a conversation and then your friend or partner walks out of the room and they slam the door really hard what do you make of that? You hear the door slam. What does your mind do with that? So let, let's just name a couple of things. What might your mind do with that? It's a story, probably. I did something wrong. I did something wrong. Thanks, Sherry. They're angry. They're angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's, a, that, that, that's all I need is just to have us all on the same page with regard to <clears throat> a thing happens and then we make up some kind of a story. And it's very important in intimate relationships, as we know, to check out those, we call them the imagine. Like I heard the door slam and I imagine you're angry. Are you? You know, that's one of the basic skills of communication that, that we've probably all learned here and there. So checking out what you imagine or assume or interpret. I wanna name another, a, a couple of other things that tend to be um, filters in our, in our perceptions. So when we think about who to trust, and I was, I was dealing with a couple yesterday and they just have very different personality styles. Uh, he has a kind of a negativity bias, which would, information comes in and he'll go, yeah, but they didn't cover that or um, you gotta watch out for that. And she'll have more of a positivity bias. It's, it's, it's like, Oh, well, that sounds good. Oh, that, that, that kind, of, kind of fits with my experience. But she, you know, she just takes things more at face value and, and he's more questioning. And as, as they're going through life together, she, the more people with different personality styles and different perceptual styles go through life together, what they learn, I hope, is wow, it really does challenge my ability to trust when I'm pairing up with somebody who filters, different, filters the same data differently than I do. So it's sort of like the glass half, half empty person and the glass half full person. If you're interdependent with that kind of person and they filter things differently, gee, if I'm a if I'm a glass 
half empty person and I'm a little suspicious as I go through life, you know, what do they want from me? What are they up to? And my partner's like real trusting. I might have trouble trusting my partner's ability to make decisions because they're, they're, they're so accepting. They just, they believe everything they hear type of thing. Vice versa, you know, if I'm, if I'm the positive person, I, I start to, you know, my partner questions everything. And then I begin to question them, you know, well, geez, always questioning things. So it's, it, it's a real issue, this trust that letting somebody else in here, um, learning how, how to trust, especially in this bigger, so I gave you sort of the dyad couple intimate um, example here, but we're all facing having to collaborate and make decisions with people who are all over the map with regard to all these different things like personality style, cognitive biases, the social reference group that they identify with and therefore try to conform to, just name, naming a few. I wish everybody could have a good course in social psychology because here's what social psychology teaches. <clears throat> in fact, I wanna go back and take another course in social psychology and nobody, I mean, nobody talks about this stuff anymore. I guess we used to, cause I, you know, I used to be in a college environment where we talk about these things, but conformity pressure, conformity to your reference group. So my, you know, my reference group might be the alternative health community. That's one reference group or um, academic psychologists. And so if, you know, if I'm trying to appeal to my colleagues as an academic psychologist, I behave in a, I, I behave in a certain way. I agree with, you know, with, with certain kind, with certain kinds of um, so-called cultural facts coming through and so forth. So conformity pressure is one of the things, and I, I've got a, a few different things here that I wanted to mention um, that are basically from social psychology. And it's, and the other one is your family, obviously your family culture. Okay, so let's see who needs to mute themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody that's got that sound in the background. Thank you. So the th some of the things besides the uh, reference group in terms of professional or or your um, social group that you identify with, like I said, al alternative medicine or people who question authority. Those are all kind of reference groups. And then there's your family culture, your family of origin. Did no? Did you did you did you grow up being kind of judgmental toward people who are different, or very accepting toward people who are different from yourself? And so these these are all things that we bring to a situation when we're trying to sort out fact from fiction. So what I wanted to play with today, um, first I want to do a little exercise that illustrates the difference between what you see and what your mind does with that. And then we'll go into some COVID facts, but I want us to all, all kind of get the difference between what's a, what's a actual fact and what's an interpretation. So um, what I wanna do is, is get a volunteer, somebody that we will pin. Do you all know how to do the pin thing on Zoom? It's in the upper, right corner of somebody's screen. Once, once we get a volunteer, we'll go to the upper right corner of their screen. I was so uh, fear of inadequacy, so not. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Okay, so um, 
somebody's going to volunteer to let us all pin you. And then we're going to look at what we see either about you or about your environment there. And we're going to say, I see, da, 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 and I imagine. So we're going to do this little exercise that has that distinction very clear. We're going to do it in the way we set, structure our sentence. So who, who will be the volunteer here to be pinned? Okay, thanks, Scott. So you go to the upper right-hand corner of Scott's screen, and you'll see somewhere on that list of options, you'll see pin. So I'm going to pin Scott. All righty. So now somebody just raise your hand and then speak. You don't have to like wait for me to call on you. Just raise your hand and then speak. So like, Scott, I see. So what do we what do we what do we see when we look at Scott? And then what do we imagine? So I'll say I see Scott that you slightly smiled a second ago. And I imagine you're going to enjoy this little exercise. Scott, I see you are wearing headphones and I imagine you have an affinity for tech stuff. Scott, I see what looks like records on a bookshelf behind you and I imagine you like music. Scott, I am. I see you wearing a T-shirt in the middle of the winter, so I imagine you're in a warm climate. One more. Okay, Scott, I see you have what looks like unshaved, like maybe like a two-day, one or two-day-old beard. So I imagine that you're working from home. Okay, let's remove the pin now. That's over on my left of my screen. Uh, go back to gallery view. How did that feel, Scott? Just want to hear a little bit from you and thank you for volunteering. Um, it was fun. I, I noticed I enjoyed the attention. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I think it was a great demonstration. Everyone seems to get the distinction between what you see and what your mind does with that. So the next step in this would be, I wanna ask for another volunteer who will make some kind of a statement and any, any kind of a statement at all. It can be a, state, a statement about the world, a statement about something you're uh, dealing with now. Just give us, give us a bit of data. Okay, anybody wanna give us data? And then we'll do the same thing, but we'll say, I heard you say this and I imagine. Okay, Sherry, give us some data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday uh, in meditation in a float tank, I was working with the phrase that um, everything in life happens for me, mm -hmm. not to me. Mm -hmm. And that the most challenging relationships in my life are there to be teachers and guides. Mm -hmm. So that's my data point for you right now. Great. Does, that, does that work? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Somebody want to start us off? You can just take one part of what Sherry said, or. This is Ty. Um, I am. Um, I heard you say that uh, things seem to work out for you uh, or something to that language. And I've heard it at the Esther Hicks seminar. So I imagine you're a uh, student of that uh, law of attraction. Alex, you're gonna speak? Sherry, I heard you say you were in a float tank and I imagine you are into all kinds of meditation props. Hmm. 
Sherry, I heard you say you were in a float tank, and I imagine you also like to do drugs. It's always very interesting for the person receiving these projections to notice how you feel when you receive these kind of things. But once again, we've got that sound. Okay, thank you. Can I say one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sherry, I heard you say everything in my life happens for me, not to me, something to that effect. And that made me think that you've, you're, you're not a novice on the, on the relationship learning path, that you've been through some things to, to lead you to that point. Okay, that, that, that's also a good demonstration there. Everybody seems to have this distinction pretty well. Uh, Sherry, how did that feel for you to receive those projections? Mm. I noticed that I was amused quite a bit mm -hmm. and I think what I enjoyed the most was what people hear when I say what I say versus like with Scott it was like what we see Mm -hmm. So what, what assumptions we make based on what we see versus what assumptions we make versus what we hear. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I really enjoyed the, the learning mm -hmm. about what people might hear, because it teaches me something like, okay, if mm -hmm. know your audience, Mm -hmm. So if I want to out myself as, you know, someone who uses medicines or substance to go on mental journeys, then, you know, maybe I talk about float tanks, maybe I don't, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that's interesting. Yeah. Based on the perception I'm willing for people to have of me, not that I'm in control over it. Right, right. Thank you. Good. I got a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, I was thinking, you know, my comment is actually partly a reflection of who I am, you know, projected onto Sherry. And I uh, wonder if that might be the case for uh, in general, is that when somebody makes a comment uh, like you described in your formula, is it more about the person being commented on or is it more about the person making the comment using the what they heard as a reference? Well, I think it's always important to take any of those like stories we make up about another person. I mean, what we saw is what we saw or heard, but any story we make up, I'd, I'd say go, go with the theory. There's some reason in me that I picked up on that. Now, even the thing about um, wearing the t-shirt you know, even that, there's something about me that's having me pay attention to that. So sit, sit with that a minute. It's, it's either uh, some similarity, something that challenges me. You'd have to dig pretty deep sometimes to get the insight about yourself. But I would want people to look, look there. That's, that's what this this whole exercise is about. It's being interested in your own projections onto, uh, let's say, a fairly neutral situation. So <clears throat> now we're going to bring in COVID facts, okay? And when I, when I say facts in the getting real work, I'm asking people, a fact is like, okay, Dr. Mercola, <clears throat> here's, here's, here's two versions of a fact. Um, taking the vaccine more than once or twice, especially, will compromise your immune system. Okay, now in my world, 
that is, that is not the kind of fact I want us to be reporting in this exercise. The fact is I read in Dr. Mercola's newsletter where he says that taking the vaccine will compromise your immune system. So the only, I don't know if that's an actual, see the first version was it will compromise your immune system. I don't know that. I haven't done the research. I, 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 don't, I don't dig that deeply. Um, but what the fact is, is I read this and I'm telling you where I read it. And that's, the, so that's what we're gonna be calling facts. Let me give you a screen share to kind of um, illustrate what I mean here. So we can be real, real clear, because we're going to do a, a, an exercise that kind of brings some personal biases and some emotions into things now. So I'm looking for, ah, okay, here's. So <clears throat> what I'm calling a fact for this exercise is what you actually like read or saw or experienced. And then what I'm calling an opinion. So then we're gonna draw, we're gonna have each share a fact, and then we're going to have an opinion about that fact. So uh, an example might be, here's, here's you know, my example. I've read, let me, let me make sure I get it co correctly here. I've, I don't have all my, I don't have all my handouts here, sorry. Um, I've read that COVID symptoms for children under eight years old are pretty similar to a mild flu. I read that in the New York Times. Okay, so, so that's a fact. An opinion that I might make about that could be, so it doesn't make sense to me, my opinion would, might be, it doesn't make sense to me that they would close the schools for young kids. Okay, so that's an example there. Would somebody else, so I think you have, I, th I think you have the distinction. Now I'm gonna stop the share. And I wanna ask somebody to volunteer to give some, some factual statement of your own about what you read or saw or actually ex experienced in, in your own life and then make an opinion about that. This is a little hard, I know. Uh, Alex, go ahead. I saw people wearing a mask while walking on the beach and the story that came up for me was that this makes no sense at all. Okay, um, now let's let you have a feeling that comes up as you state that opinion? The first feeling that comes up is anger. Okay. All right, so that's, so that's a little bit, what you just did, Alex, is a little bit like the I notice and I imagine exercise. Is it, and, that, and that's helpful, that's just, just to see that. Um, I'm going to get an, an, another, maybe at least one or two more examples, and then we can comment on what came up for us as we're listening to these things. Does anyone have a more um, 
factual type of fact, um, like something that's out in the world being told to people. Yes, um, I, I see your hand there, Lisa. Uh, so I saw in a New York Times video last night that apparently hospitals are not hiring enough nurses so that they can maintain a certain profit or amount of profit. And I interpret this that um, if I end up needing serious medical care that I won't be receiving the kind of care that I might need. And that makes me afraid. Okay, so you got the feeling in there too. Thank you, Lisa. I think let's let's see if anybody else has has one be, before we go further. Scott, you have something? You just look like you you just un, unmuted yourself or something. So I thought maybe you did. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, Eileen. Hi everyone. Um, I had watched a podcast with Joe Rogan that I thought was excellent. And it was interviewing um, Dr. Malone. And I was very impressed. So I was surprised a few days ago to hear that Neil Young, who I have always liked, wants to take his or did take his music off of Spotify because he was mad that they had the Joe Rogan podcast, the specific one that I liked. And um, so my opinion is this has gotten way out of hand. And my feeling was that I was happy that Joe Rogan came back at um, Neil Young by doing his rendition of a song that was um, Rockin' the Free World. It, it made me happy that he was standing up for himself in that way. <laughs> Thank you. Sherry. I'd like to ask Eileen a clarifying question. Would that be okay? Yeah. Is yeah. that okay, Eileen? Is sure. Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. Because what I am interested in is unpacking like a, a, a deeper feeling for you. And when you said, I think this has gone too far, would you just define this for me? Um, the, the, what appears to me in the world is so much fighting of my side is right and your side is wrong without curiosity. I, like my opinion is I can't imagine that Neil Young looked into the situation because I feel that the interview he's against was an expert from everything I've heard. And so I, like my feeling is I wanna live in a world where there's kindness and I, I kind of wanna like live in the garden of Eden. So the current situation has gotten so far from where I want the world to be. Is that, did that address what you were saying better? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Thank you. I wanted to thank understand the, the, the pain part for you yeah. and your explanation did a beautiful job and now I can feel you more. Yeah, that was brilliant because I struggle with being able to talk about my feelings mm. and, it, and being invited to talk about my feelings. It's easy, but left to my own devices, I struggled to find my way to that place. So you did me a great favor, thank you. <laughs> thank you both, yeah, yeah. How, how many people have felt some resonance with what Eileen was saying when she unpacked the, this, this has gone too far? How many people felt some? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So is there is there anybody here now start with a feeling or a fact 
or an opinion, because an opinion was this has gone too far. That's an opinion. Um, about this COVID situation, just, just make a statement. Don't worry about whether it's a fact or an opinion. Just you know, make your own statement here. And, and then the rest of us will look at what we do with that. Anybody got a statement that, that just you? I'll offer a statement. All right, T. Um, I, uh, my observation is the uh, fear of uh, COVID is just as destructive as the virus itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would call that an opinion. You, you called it an observation. Are you okay with that amendment yep. there, Ty? Yes. yes. Yeah. My opinion is that the fear is, so say, say that again so that we can all feel what we feel when they, we hear that opinion. Okay. My opinion is that the fear of COVID is just as destructive to health as COVID itself. That's slightly my amended there. Thank you. Thank you. So as we're listening, we listen to Ty there. What comes up? Just any anything. And we'll look at how, how we filter data. I mean, that's a that opinion is, um, is is one we've probably heard before somewhere. Might depend on where we heard it, how we react, but um, anybody willing to just first like check in what came up for me self talk feeling question even a question but just we're not going to ask Ty a question right now we're just going to see what came up for you anything uh alex go ahead i experienced this moment of relief listening and somehow feeling left less alone with my opinion hearing this mm -hmm. so relief and less alone so that comes from somebody who has a similar opinion right you have a similar opinion and that has you feeling relief did anybody feel anything more like uh, resistance to what to what Ty said. Anything on that scale? I I didn't somewhere like because I I also felt relief, mm -hmm. and and then I also have this questioning part that's like. Well, what is true? Is that is that true? Or how and how would I like, how do I or how do I hold hold that or what do I think really, yeah, I guess. Any other any other feelings coming up, thoughts? I'm curious what Scott wanted to say, because I think he unmuted a couple of times. So I'm tracking that. Um, actually, what I wanted, I wanted to ask um, when we are responding, I was wondering if we were intending to stick with the, like I notice and I imagine, um, or if we're kind of just doing general responses. It's a general response of what is a, what was the feeling or the self-talk. That, that came up. Thanks for that, Scott. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Sherry. Um, my self talk was I immediately went into the fear stories mm -hmm. um, and the way in which I agree and resonated with the, the mental health and emotional health damage. Mm -hmm of the fear of being close to my fellow humans. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and so that, that's what was immediately happening for me was I was unpacking the word fear mm -hmm. 
yeah. and how fear of this lives in me and the and the damage of said fear in 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 my circles so yeah thank that, that's, you I, I went there thank you yeah i the thought i had was um the thought i had was along the lines of i'm not well, I just it, it, basically, I'm not really interested in other people's opinions or my opinion. I'm interested in what's real, like what's actual truth. Um, and I wish, and then I guess the, you know the feeling around that is frustration. That uh, that's so difficult to nail down, and also frustration that people so often. Um, in the same way as noticing and imagining, people value their imagining much more than their noticing. Like all, so many of the conversations are about opinions and beliefs and theories and stuff like that. And I'm like, who fucking cares? <laughs> like, it's just like going around in circles. And I want to acknowledge um, people by, if you, if you feel resonance, do this. Like I was feeling a lot of resonance, a lot of agreement with what you just said, Scott. And uh, so let, let's offer that little bit of feedback on the screen when we feel that. Thank you, Scott. And, and when I heard that statement, my, my personal uh, inner response to, um, to, to the statement about the fear is worse than, than the disease was a kind of fear came over me and the words were, what can I trust? That kind of thing. And I think that's, that's kind of why I'm doing this webinar today with you is my own uh, struggle to how to sort out so much conflicting data. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm fear of overwhelm is what it feels like to me that I'm uh, experiencing. Anyone else want to just share what what's up for you around any of this around that state around the statement about the the fear? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Lisa. Uh, I, Eileen. Um, I don't know that this is fact, opinion, or emotion, but I, I'm just so clear all of a sudden from what the um, Scott and Susan both said that fear. My understanding is fear makes us unable to think clearly. And so this is all like, like mud, like how, if we don't get out of the fear, how do we ever get anywhere? Yes. <laughs> so I really appreciate you for what, for what you just said, Eileen. Thank you. And being, you know, my intent here is to is to bring some curiosity to this whole question of how do we sort out fact fiction imagining and um, um it's just an experiment that I'm doing do you know doing this webinar just to kind of see what comes out I didn't have I didn't have it really well planned of what I wanted to get here, but I wanted to get a conversation and kind of see, well, is it, is it hard? Is it harder to hear? Here's one of the things I was coming in with. Is it harder to hear opinions when you haven't heard where they're coming from? Like I read in Dr. McCola this statement, and now I have an opinion about that. Is it, is it harder to hear an opinion when it's not documented at all? Is it easier to hear a feeling than an opinion? Is it easier to hear an opinion when I call it an opinion, when I know 
It's my conclusion when I'm not trying to pass it off as fact, when I'm actually able to make that distinction in my communication. Because I think we do want to be heard and understood. So those are some of the questions I'm, I'm coming in with. Let's, let's, let's try somebody else having a statement, whether it's, again, fact feeling, could even be a comment on what I just said, but make, making some kind of a statement and then we'll, we'll work with that for just a, a few more minutes here in this. Any other statement at all that just comes to you about the COVID subject? Uh, Joy has something. Mm -hmm. You have to unmute, Joy. Uh, I went for a walk in the woods and connected with a woman. Um, and we hugged. And in the woods, outdoors, um, they're unmasked. So it's a totally different experience. I'm afraid of other people, not of COVID. And I went to visit a woman who's in an intensive care, who supposedly, um, according to the friend, mutual friend, old friend, um, I went with her to visit the woman and she had uh, been um, supposedly diagnosed with COVID. And I thought, this is strange. They're allowing people to come visit her. Um, we better pause because that, that's a lot of data right there. <laughs> so there is different worlds, <laughs> lots of different worlds. Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to add one more because I went to an improv group at the Seventh Day Adventist Church last night. They were wearing masks, but we held hands at one point, and there was a lot of play. So, uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, you know, just one more thing. The Buddhists have an expression, it's all one taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I could, I could comment on, uh, on, on the content there, but let's each talk about our feeling or self-talk, any, any like that, like, what just came up for you when you heard uh, what Joy shared? I heard a chronology, but no opinion. So that would be, I would call that your self-talk then. That's a thought you have about, or an opinion. That would be an opinion. Okay, so I'm um, just, using whatever comes at me here to make these distinctions so that we can sort out which, you know, when we have something come up for us, is that an opinion? Is that a fact? Is that a feeling? Okay, who else? Uh, Sherry. I felt a range of contradictions and that, and my opinion is that seemed to amuse joy. <laughs> so felt a range of contradictions it sounds it sounds more like a thought to me there you thought boy there's a range of contradictions or something like that I'm yeah I, you I, a judgment the... maybe did I did I go to a judgment about mm -hmm. but maybe also I was I was noticing joy's ability mm -hmm. to see all these different ways of being in all these different situations and then i felt a 
appreciation mm -hmm. for her amusement by all of it as like oh that's a, that's it's it's interesting to me that i that my judgment of her reaction was amusement mhm mm mhm mm so actually it was amusement is sort of in the feeling realm um <clears throat> a range of contradictions that's a, a kind, kind of an assessment or a generalization about what she said. Can, can you, you follow mm -hmm. me? So that's, yeah, a mental, I'm following. that's a mental process. Amusement and appreciation are in the feeling realm. Um, and then you said something about her amusement. You could see or sense or feel her amusement. That is That is probably your imagining or your projection or your story about joy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, good one. It's these are just distinctions that in a lot of parts of life, maybe you don't find them critical to be making, but in where there's so many conflicting things and so many emotions coming in. I'm, I'm kind of hammering this one hard today, no, noticing these distinctions. So thanks for giving me that opportunity, Sherry. Anybody else want to have a, a reaction to uh, Joy's share there? Feelings, self-talk, observation. Uh, Alicia. <laughs> Ah, um, yeah, I felt, I felt softness in my body and I felt kind of excited. And I had this story running that amid the chaos and the fear and the confusion, humans will still find spaces of playfulness and connection layered with all the contradiction, holding hands or wearing a mask. And yeah, I kind of had this like internal dance <laughs> happening mm -hmm. in response. Mm -hmm. mm. Anyone else? I appreciated what you said there, Alicia. That was nice. Mm -hmm. So mostly, I just want to get across today. I'm going to, I'm going to end a little early because I've got an, another session to do. But I wanted to get across today the opportunity, and I'm going to give us this opportunity now to feel into when we sit ourselves in the midst of, I'm going to assume that we're in a, a, a similar world here where we're in the midst of conflicting facts and conflicting opinions and feelings getting very charged. How is this all affecting you? How's that affecting me personally? Just being in that pool together here, because we are, we are all in this together and we're having to have conversations with people who see the world differently from us. But list about this one subject, how's it affecting you? And some of us already shared some things that uh, illustrate how you're feeling, but I just wanna give you a chance to. For, uh, this is Ty. Um, yeah, go ahead, speak. Uh, the um, sense I get is the more I see the contradictions, the more I conclude that most of the things I see and read are opinions. You know, some doctor says that the doctorship doesn't make it a fact. The doctorship makes it opinion that has, you know, more expertise behind it, but it doesn't make it a fact. Uh, more marketing, you might say. So uh, to me, it boils down to I'm responsible for forming my own perspective. And to look outside, I can test and compare. 
but I, uh, for me to pass that responsibility of my own conclusion to another is uh, um, naive. Thank you. Anyone else want to share what, how this is all affecting you? Okay, uh, go ahead, uh, Julia. Um, Susan, I'm, I'm loving what you're doing. And actually, I feel like I actually need this kind of level of distinction in conversations, because if I don't, I, I end up like the conversation can get so heated for some people that we can't even finish the conversation. So I'm actually finding that these, these kinds of tools like differentiating fact versus opinion are actually the kind of, um, we could say like um, relating savvy that requires me to now just navigate my daily world with an ounce of sanity. I love what you just said. And I, I think I'm just gonna um, ping off of that because I did need to close a little early with a, with a kind of closing statement for today which is this, th this whole information overload and conflicting stories that we're getting and a crisis of truth and crisis of trust and all of these uh, collective issues that are coming up. I'm thinking and I'm comforting myself with the thought that these are evolutionary drivers to force humans to learn to make better distinctions in their thinking, in their communication, in their relating, not just follow the herd, uh, or but, but also be aware of your tendency to follow the herd and to, to just level up our self-awareness and our communication. And so um, if you're about that, we're on the same team. And I really like feeling not alone. So thanks for thanks for showing up today for this. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Hey. Thanks, thanks. Susan. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Trying to stop the recording.